Okay, so in this video we're going to take a look at the reflection of light. Um, so what we've got in here is we've got ourselves a ray box uh, with a slit in it. So we're going to get just a fine beam of light. So we've got that in there. We've got ourselves a what we call a plain mirror. So that's a mirror where all, it's essentially flat, so it's not curved in any way. So it just looks like one straight line from the side. So there's our mirror. And we've got a protractor, I've got myself a ruler and a pen so I can do some drawings as well. So let's get started. So what we're going to look at is to see if we can find a law which reflection follows. That's our objective here. So whenever we do anything with optics, we're going to be drawing what we call normals. So first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw around my mirror so I can mark its position. Okay, so let's do that first of all. Let's change, I'll change to red, there we go. That should work and be very visible. Okay, so we've got our marking where the mirror is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line at 90 degrees to that. So I'm gonna, do, we could do this with a protractor super accurately, but uh, essentially it's gonna look like this. Okay. So we've got what's called the normal line there. So what I'm going to do is put the mirror back in there and I'm going to turn our light source on. So what we're aiming to do is we want it to, the light to hit where the normal meets the boundary. So um, just to take our mirror away. So this one in here, this is what we call the boundary because essentially that's where air meets glass and then we've got our normal over here. So we want the light to be hit at the intersection of the boundary with the normal. So let's adjust that slightly. It's almost there, but there we go. I think that's a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark positions where the light has traveled through. So I'm gonna put an X there, an X here. We know it hit that intersection there so, and it goes through here. And it goes through here. Now you can do this on uh, what's called an optical board with pins, uh, but this works just fine. So then what we can do is we can turn off our light, move a mirror away, and we can actually draw where the rays of light went. So you can see the line went through here, went through here. Okay, so we're not, I'm not going to be like crazily precise about this, but somewhere a little bit like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a ray a little bit like that. And what we want to do is I'm going to measure this angle in here and this angle in here and see how they compare. So I'm going to give myself a little table at the top. So we've got what's called the angle of incidence, which is measured in degrees, and we've got the angle of refraction also measures in degrees. The angle of incidence is this one. This is the angle between the incoming ray and the normal. The angle of reflection is this one, the between the reflected ray and the normal, but they're both measured to the normal. So let's do our first one. So we can move uh, stuff out of the way so this is a little bit easier. Uh, so we're making sure we get this point right on the intersection of the normal with that. I reckon that is about 46 degrees. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to be reading this upside down, but whatever. Okay, so that is, I would say, uh, that's about 45 degrees. So it looks like within experimental uncertainty, these two values are pretty much the same. But we're not going to know that until we try a different angle of incidence. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change our angle of incidence to a different one and see whether our idea that these two angles is the same holds up. Uh, so let's get a really wide one, so a really big angle of incidence in there. So we can see that the ray goes through here, goes through here. Uh, right, it goes through here. We want to get these X's nice and far apart so we can draw our line as accurate as possible. Now we're all good. Okay, 
There we go. Right through there. Through there. And we've got our second ray there. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Measure our angles. You can see our angular instance is quite a lot bigger this time. So you can see that's about 69, I'd say, degrees. Let's do our angle in here as well. That looks, so it's just past 70, so I think 71 degrees. So you can see within, within experimental uncertainty, we've got them equal to each other. So we're going to do one final one with a nice small angle of incidence to check our rule still holds for all angles. Okay, so let's do that one in there. Again, we're going to mark where the ray has gone through. So let's do it through there, making sure they're nice and far apart. Okay, looks like we're good to go. It's gone through here. Come through here. You can see I was a bit uh, sloppy with my points. That, that seems fine. Then one final time, we'll measure our angles. So I reckon that is pretty much 25 degrees. That one is, what, 27 degrees. So we can see that our angle of incidence and our angle of reflection within experimental uncertainty are the same value every time. So that's what we call our law of reflection. The fact that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection within experimental uncertainty.